Hello and welcome to Culture Shock. I'm Evan and this is Brent. Hello. Hello. So what are we talking about today on Culture Shock? Can you guess? Trains? Yes, very special trains. That's not just any train, that's one futuristic looking train. Exactly. That almost looks sci-fi train. Almost. That is a Shinkansen, a Japanese bullet train. Shinkansen. Yeah. That's what we're going to be talking about today. These are very fast trains that operate in Japan. We're talking 200 mile an hour trains. That's Normal cooking. Service. Yeah, it really is cooking. Huh. Uh, well, you can imagine a country like Japan, very mountainous. It needs a service that will get people around very quickly to a lot of different destinations, and that's what the bullet train provides. Wow, from city to city? Absolutely, yes. So you, sometimes you'll have expresses that go just from one city to the next. It's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, now, it, they started back in 1964, um, during which something very special happened in Japan, which was... The Olympics! Exactly! Yeah. Tokyo Olympics. So, uh, they were brought online just in time for the Tokyo Olympics. Oh, wow. And um, uh, they were seen as this... Um, I mean, miracle is maybe not the right word, but this uh, showcase the technology exactly, uh, just yes. in time for everybody coming in from all the different nations to yeah. enjoy it and marvel over. Right, and it, it was really there to show partly how much Japan had grown since World War II, and just the the, the engineering feat required or something like that was just mind blowing. Uh, and sure enough, they managed it. Now I, I understand these these trains not only do they run fast, but they also run very safely. Absolutely, yeah. There has been no passenger fatalities due to derailment or collision ever since 1964. That is an incredible safety sure record. Is. Wow. <laughs> None, ever. None <laughs> whatsoever. Um, and that is with a very impressive efficiency record as well. Um, do you want to guess what the average delay per train was in 2012? Well, uh, riding on some of the trains in my locality, I'd figure we have a delay every 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 week. There's a big delay of uh, mm -hmm. uh, whatever problem they're having. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can't imagine that these would be run as as uh, with so many delays. So I'm figuring maybe a, a not more than an uh, maybe an hour a day or no an hour a week maybe. Uh, Thirty six seconds a year. A year. A year. 36 seconds a year? You <laughs> can set your watch train. by that. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you can. That's more accurate than my watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is how efficiently they do it. Uh, there's actually an interview with one of the people who runs it, and he says, understand, we're running trains every few minutes. Wow. So, and especially, in, and um, uh, they're running next to uh, regular trains as well. Mm -hmm. Something else we should mention is that um, people get confused. Uh, not all trains in Japan are bullet trains. Mm. There are plenty of classic trains, old trains, and just regular trains running as well. Uh, but you've got these things coming in and out, uh, and so it's very important that those run completely exactly on time. Mm -hmm. Pretty impressive. So now I, I've, I've heard that they have their own tracks for these because they're so fast. Right. Absolutely. The, the tracks have to be engineered for the trains. Uh, and so all of the Shinkansen are all on the same gauge, same um, uh, tracks all the way through. Um, and, and it's actually designed also for banking, things along those lines, to make sure that when it's going fast speed around a, a banked curve, that it's going to be doing the right thing around that curve, and also that it can do that for decades. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> now, now, it started out in 1964, but it's mm -hmm. grown since then. Yes. So is that a network across the nation, or is it just a couple cities? Or No, it's all across the nation. There are actually four different companies that operate Shinkansen in Japan now, uh, and dozens of trains. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty pretty massive thing. Wow, four different Four different owners. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how do the airlines feel about this uh, as competition? Or? Well, yeah, it, it certainly is. The efficiency of the Shinkansen means that people don't need to fly nearly as much. And j given Japan's geography, it's there aren't a lot of places where you can build an airport. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, it's, a, it's a very efficient thing. And also, as with anything, they've gotten so good at digging tunnels and otherwise leveling ground for the Shinkansen, it's more efficient to run it. They, mm. they can do it relatively cheaply. So it just makes a lot of, lot of sense to run train lines. Uh, and you'll, of course you also have the advantage that you walk to the station and you walk onto a train. There's none of the <laughs> same kind of problems with um, oh, airline travel. flying, there's so many restrictions <laughs> and 
different areas that you have to go through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, when I was in Japan, I could literally just walk up to a train station and say, I would like a ticket on that train, you know, leaving in five minutes. And they would get me a ticket and I'd just walk on. It's pretty cool. And, and this is a, a train service that's, that's serviced 10 billion passengers. It's just, you know, very, very effective and uh, very well loved. To have that safety record with that many people, it's just <laughs> mind-boggling. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, now, of course, they have expanded and upgraded, so the seats are very comfortable. Uh, one of the neat things that you'll, you'll see often in the anime is these uh, rotating seats. Hmm. Um, so they'll take a, a row of seats, and you can flip them any way, so you can uh, have uh, uh, basically a set of seats pointing at each other. Do that, airlines. Exactly. <laughs> um, so if you're in a group of, say, four, you can all be looking at each other, which is really That nice. is great. So yeah. if you wanted to, you could play cards or talk and see who you're talking to. Absolutely. And they all have tr uh, flip-out trays and things along those lines, and they're very comfortable. Hmm. It's, the other nice thing is because they're designed for these longer trips, they're designed for longer trips. So all the amenities <laughs> inside there. Uh, and then, of course, you also get uh, food and beverage carts. That's another nice thing. Ooh. So uh, someone will, will, will come along with food and beverage. You can purchase off a cart, and you get snacks and drinks and such. Now, do these run all hours of the night, or...? No. So they'll generally run you know, early morning into late evening because, again, they are designed more for um, intercity travel, uh, travel from city to city and town to town. Uh, you're, there's not really an expectation that anyone's going to be on there at 3 a.m. trying to get home from a bar. Well, do they do they stop at every stop along the way, or do they... No, they're bullet trains, so they'll only stop at certain stops. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll just be city to city or town to town. Um, now, one of the nice things is that, uh, A, obviously the lines are published, so if you're going to go on a train, you can see where, where they're going. But also on the overhead displays, they will show for the, for the upcoming train, I believe the next two trains, they will show the incoming train on what line and then what the next stops are. So they'll say this, this is coming in, next stop is uh, Tokyo, um, you know, uh, uh, an outskirt stop and then an in-city in uh, stop. So it will tell you right there on the display where it's going to and how many stops it has, mm. which is definitely very handy. And it's yeah. Japanese and English, I should point out. <laughs> <laughs> wow, great for travelers. Absolutely, yes. So uh, what, what about rural citizens do they have any way of do they have any stops in they often do um, and it depends obviously on where you are but uh, again, one of the one of the designs of the, the bullet trains is to get it out to people way out there hmm. um, so yeah you'll, you'll get these um, rural cities and of course the other nice thing is that even if you don't have it you generally have at least a, a rail stop in town so you can at least get to a bullet train go to the next town closest and mm -hmm. then and it's, it's pretty darn far out. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> wow. So uh, not only is this train uh, in Japan, but because they've, they've got such a great system, has it spread throughout the world yet? Or To an extent. So there are other countries that have um, Shinkansen technology. And that's the, kind of the, 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 the central thing here is that you can have a fast train, hmm. but it isn't necessarily based on the technology in the Shinkansen. But uh, that technology has been exported to Taiwan, China, uh, the UK, and um, I believe that's actually it so far. There's also plans to put it in Brazil, the US, uh, Vietnam, Canada, India, and Thailand. Oh, wow. Just imagine going from uh, uh, Los Angeles to San Francisco on a bullet train. <laughs> <laughs> 200 miles an hour. Man, be pretty nice. Oh, coast to coast. Mm -hmm. Imagine. And that's the other nice thing is because there's so much technology behind it that is um, aware of the track, aware of conditions, it can go as fast as possible given those conditions. So, so, so these are very high-tech trains, and yeah. since they've come out, they've been refined, and different generations have had improvements. Mm -hmm. And from one, my, my understanding of them, they sense and map out the track and the position of other trains, mm -hmm. and they communicate between the trains so they know when to slow down as another train is approaching. Yep. And they can calculate not only the grade, the curve, as all the data has been gathered, but also the position and react in a more efficient and faster way than a yeah. human operator can, but they still have They absolutely a have human a human operator. operator. There's always a human operator on there, um, partly because things crop up that a the computer can't sense. 
Um, but Just also, in case. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but also to make up delays. So the human operator can see, uh, so as they're leaving, a voice will, will, um, will tell them and a display will tell them three seconds late. And so they can know, okay, I need to speed up here, here. This is a good place to speed up. This is not a good place to speed up. Um, and so they, they keep track of that. They, they log it. All that is 36 seconds <laughs> per year. It's oh, wow. Crazy. I'd have no excuse for being late to work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and indeed, if, if they are even one second late, they will hand out a coupon to all of the passengers so they can take into work to say, this is why I was late. Um, oh, I, think, wow. I, I think the back. I think, I think it's like 30 seconds, more than 30 seconds late. And again, that's an average. Um, but yeah, if, if you are any significant amount late, you, you can take it and say, no, the, the, the bullet train was late. I have, I have my report, my, 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 my signed letter from mommy saying, <laughs> you just stopped to tie your shoelace. <laughs> no, 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 the train, really, I, the train. <laughs> and imagine that. I mean, again, you, you think about a, a company which cares so much that they will actually that do that. And it, it, it really makes them want to then not do that, you know, and make their trains really, really efficient. Wow. Uh, and w there was an interview with uh, the person who, 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 who runs the trains asked basically, why are you that efficient? Like, that's, that's kind of insane. And he said, well, understand, we're running trains every three or four minutes. Um, you know, we have very aggressive time timetables because of how many trains there are. Um, so we kind of have to be that efficient. Otherwise, everything gets, gets uh, bottled up and then everything gets delayed. Mm. Uh, there's just really not much space in the system for delays. So you, you have to be kind of so so like that. in between cities sounds like a long way to travel mm. great for people who are on tour but what about people who are commuting is that the oh, kind yeah. of thing that's affordable for definitely the commuter? Um, and that's one of the things that's actually allowed tokyo to become like the biggest city in the world practically um is that there's a lot of commuting in actually so folks will live in these tiny towns outside of tokyo and then commute in because the country the, the company they work for will often pay for it oh um it's considered sort of a a, a way of finding a place where you can actually afford to live you know? <laughs> um and so you just take the shinkansen in every day and if it's going 200 miles an hour you can live 100 miles outside of tokyo no problem um wherever you want to so it's it's a big advantage now of course that does mean that tokyo has a lot of um, a lot of corporate infrastructure and less need, if you will, for housing, which has a certain impact on the design of, of the of the city. Uh, it's one of the reasons why Tokyo is so kind of congested with with all these big uh, buildings and so forth, because mm. you don't need as many um, condos, things along those lines. Wow, it's it's a very dense dense city. Mm -hmm. Looking at it from Google Earth, it's just <laughs> incredible to if you get a chance to look and zoom in, it's and zoom in, yeah. and zoom in, and zoom in, and it's like a circuit absolutely board. It. <laughs> well, when you think that for a long time there was no Tokyo Airport Ooh. because there just wasn't space for one, <laughs> um, and um, I mean uh, they had a, a, an airport there, but it was only for domestic flights because they couldn't handle jumbo jets just the the amount of space to make a a landing uh, uh, a runway for that which is there's no, no space for it um and they finally managed to do that by filling in more of tokyo bay <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and um uh and getting back to the, to the earlier point it's one of the big question marks is what's the impact of air travel mm. versus train travel well you know it's it's funny looking at some of the designs yeah we see it looks it looks almost like an airplane from the outside and some of the inside, it's very sleek looking. It's aerodynamic. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, just uh, it, it it looks like they've refined it to the to the s same <laughs> specifications that aircraft go to. Yeah, uh, removing all the outer rivets mm. and having smooth surfaces, nothing to slow down or impede the airflow across. Exactly. It. Yeah, they are extremely carefully designed. Uh, and then, of course, the other thing, too, of course, when you think about it, is um, all things considered, they're a lot better for the environment. Um, you know, a, a plane f flight with all those jets. Oh, and these are electric. Yep. I see all the electric grid above it now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, they're better for the environment. They're fast. They're efficient. They're, um, th there are no fatalities. Uh, it's pretty hard to argue against them. Um, the, the big problem, again, is kind of space. You need space for tracks. You need to run them places. 
How do you do that? Where do you find them? Japan is kind of running out of space in terms of where to put trains. Mm. So that becomes a problem. How do you actually fit all this into that dense urban packed space? Wow. So um, they're doing their best. It would, as, as much as it would be great to have trains like this in the U.S., I suppose it would take a long time for the U.S. to acquire the land yep. and uh, straight paths <laughs> between cities that could accommodate those higher speeds. Right. It, it seems like it's very idealistic, but it it, it looks like it's going to take a lot of work to, to adopt that. But once it's adopted, it seems like it would be a great advantage, especially with the uh, complications of air travel these mm -hmm. days. Absolutely. Um, well, that's the other, the other thing is that, you know, imagine getting on a, on a train versus getting on a plane. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, walk up and just, okay, here you go. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm getting on now. Nice. It, 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 it is a lot nicer. So, um, yeah, and, and obviously countries like the U.S., I mean, people want it. Everyone wants it. It's the expense. Mm. It's the difficulty and the complexities of the, the reality of it. Um, Japan's a little different in what it can or can't do. So uh, fortunately, we have their model. Fortunately, we can, you know, they've done it, so we can see how they've done it. Build on their success. Exactly, adapt it to us. Yeah. So uh, if you're in Japan, you, know, you can get on a Shinkansen and experience it. It's absolutely worth trying. Hopefully coming to a town near you. Hopefully. <laughs>